Hey, welcome everybody. Today is Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week and the last Sunday of Lent. Let's open with prayer. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you so much for coming and being born as a little baby and then coming and dying to save us and rising again so that we can be with you in heaven today. And thank you, Lord, that we get to be together today to learn about your word. So today I'm going to read to you one of my favorite stories for Palm Sunday. It's called The Donkey That No One Could Ride. Okay, now it's kind of hard because it's on backwards on here. So I put some of the pictures on the computer to help you out. The first part I'm going to do, though, is open, open with our scripture verse. Okay, so we're just going to start with looking at our donkey. The scripture verse comes today from Luke 19, verse 28 to 38. Jesus went on towards Jerusalem. He sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you'll see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. All of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Okay. So that is actually what scripture says about Palm Sunday. But the story I have is really, it is, well, it's biblically true, but we don't really know, of course, that the story about the donkey is true. But this is a really cool story about um, the donkey. So I'm going to read it to you. Okay. This part's not the Bible, though. All right. So let's start out here. There once was a donkey, young, weak, and small. So weak he could carry nothing at all. Even when children ran on his hide, he wobbled and tobbled and fall to the side. No matter how much he tried or he cried, this was a donkey that no one could ride. He couldn't haul stones. He couldn't dig ditches. Back then, donkeys had to work really hard. That was kind of what they wanted them to do. If they couldn't do work and help out, they weren't much of use for anything. He couldn't carry rich men with their big bags of riches. He couldn't pull carts with huge bales of hay. Just lifting a feather would make his legs sway. No, this donkey was useless. No good at all. Too puny, too shaky, too scrawny, too small. Now the donkey's owner was quite mean and tough. He said to the donkey, I've had quite enough. He pointed his finger and said with a huff, You can't lift a finger no matter how light. So take all your things and get out of my sight. Go away from here, donkey. Go away and just hide. What use is a donkey that no one can ride? So the donkey was led to the far edge of town, pulled by his neck with his head hanging down. He was tied to a post on a small dusty road and left all alone while his tears overflowed. Left all alone and wondering why. He was born to be weak, born to be shy, born to be frightened, and born to cry. But just then, two men appeared alongside the post in the village where the donkey was tied. They came without warning on that fateful day. They came and untied him and took him away. The donkey was frightened. He said to the men, Where are we going? And then said again, Where are we going and what about me? Please leave me alone and just let me be. Keep quiet, the men said. We mean you no harm. Just follow us quickly. No cause for alarm. They walked on for miles and miles until they got to a town at the foot of the hill. At the foot of the hill stood a man, tall and thin, wearing a cloak and a beard on his chin. He had eyes that seemed sad, and longish dark hair, and a voice soft and gentle that floated on air. He said to the donkey, it's time that you knew, about the great thing that you're destined to do. You'll carry me into the city, we too, into the city. I'll ride atop you. What's that that you say? 
pride the donkey with dread. There's simply no way you've been missed in the lead. I'm just a small weakling. You must go ahead and look for another to take you instead. You see, I'm just hopeless. Ever since I was born, I've been subject to insults and teasing and scorn. My back's somewhat crooked. My legs aren't strong. I'm just a big failure who's done everything wrong. Won't you believe me? The sad donkey cried. Just leave me alone and cast me aside. I'm just a poor donkey that no one could ride. The man looked at him with a face that was wise, with a warm, tender smile and love in his eyes. And then a calm and mysterious way, he opened his mouth and started to say, My help is enough. It's all that you need. It's all that you require in life to succeed. The weaker you are, the more strength I give. I'll be there to help you as long as you live. I know you feel tired and frightened and broken, but do you believe these words that I've spoken? Do you believe? I ask you again. Do you have faith that I can heal you, my friend? What do you think the donkey should say, huh? He said, Jesus. For some reason, the donkey was sure that he knew the words the man spoke were honest and true. They were said with such kindness and caring and love. It seemed that they came from heaven above. The donkey burst out. I believe that it's true. I believe, he repeated. I believe. Yes, I do. So the man stretched his hand out and closed both his eyes. And then, to the little donkey's surprise, he felt a sensation he couldn't control from the top of his head right down to his soul. All of a sudden, he realized that now his body was stretching and changing somehow. Most amazing of all, at that very hour, the donkey began to sense that he had power. He didn't feel small or weak any longer. Instead, he felt stronger and stronger and stronger. He could feel in his body the energy flowing he could see with his eyes that his muscles were growing. His back felt like iron. His legs felt like steel. His chest felt so strong, it just couldn't be real. It's a miracle, a miracle, the donkey cried out. A miracle, a miracle, beyond any doubt. In order to show all the thanks that he felt, the donkey bowed his head down and knelt in front of the man who had made him so strong with a beard on his chin and hair that was long. The man looked upon him with sorrowful eyes, then sat on his back and told him to rise. We're bound for the city that's west of the hill. I have a great mission I need to fulfill. The donkey got up, his tears had all dried, with big bulging muscles he started to stride. No longer a donkey that no one could ride, now he had courage and power and pride he started to stride and he started to run he couldn't believe he was having so much fun with a clippity clop and a clippity clop he kept right on going with no need to stop but as they drew near to the gate of the town the donkey could hear a very strange sound the curious noise made him perk up his ears what could it be it sounded like cheers Soon crowds of people came into sight, shouting and waving their arms with delight. They were cheering at the man and giving him praise, yelling hosannas and crying hoorays. It was amazing to see the love they expressed. They called him a prophet and said that he was blessed. In front of the donkey they threw with their arms, flowers and garments and branches and palms. They laid all these down and started to sing, calling the man a savior and a king. The donkey was happy. Gone were his tears. Never had people sung in his ears. Never was there a moment so sweet as carrying a king with palms at his feet. And all his life after, the donkey rejoiced that the king had made such a wonderful choice to help with the greatest mission of all the donkey used or the king used a donkey, young, weak, and small. So every year at Christmas time, renew your hopes again. 
Remember how a little faith can give you strength. And then gather all your friends around and tell the tale of when a tiny donkey carried God into Jerusalem. So I hope you like that story. The greatest mission of all is right here. Because Jesus had to die on the cross to save us from our sins. And as we'll talk about next time, of course, he grows again for Easter. I really like this story, too, because it's a miracle. You take the donkey who's cast off and nobody wanted, and God took him and used him for a great mission. God can use all of us, great, weak, and small. Even you guys who are young and little, and sometimes you think you can't do anything, you can touch a lot of lives just by being happy and smiling and saying, Jesus loves you. You ever thought about that? Maybe in the hallway, just go up to somebody at school or wherever and say, hey, Jesus really loves you. Did you know that? That would just make their day. Okay. Now you should have a craft. If you have your craft packet, it's a palm. If you didn't do this last week, you can do it this week. Go ahead and color your palm. And then we're going to wave it and pretend that we are bringing Jesus into Jerusalem. Okay. So pause the video quick and get your palm ready. Cut it out and everything. And then get ready. Okay. Okay, if you got your palms ready, I'm going to turn on our music here. So just hold on a second while I get it ready. Wave your palm branches. Wave them. Wave them for Jesus. Is that fun? I love doing that. That's like my favorite part of Palm Sunday is waving our palm branches when everybody sings and they come in and remember what Jesus did for us. But the other thing we're going to talk about this week also is the other stuff that happened during the week of Holy Week. Okay, so I have the week that led to Easter. Okay, so here's Jesus. Hosanna, sing to Christ the King. Crowd shouted as he came. They had heard the many stories how he healed the sick and lame. Jerusalem was crowded. The Passover had begun. A time to remember Egypt and a time to have a little fun. So lots of people had come to Jerusalem. There was extra people in town. And then on Thursday night, the Passover, which is what we celebrate the past. The Jews celebrated the Passover because that was when in Egypt, the angel of death would pass over the Jewish houses and save their firstborn. So Jesus was in the upper room with his 12 disciples. They led the way to the upper room when Jesus shared his final meal. He knew his life was going to end. He told them that his life would end and that he would be betrayed. He shared his bread and wine with them, then bowed his head and prayed. Okay, so that's where we get our communion from, our Holy Communion. Jesus taught us how to do that at the Last Supper. Then after supper, he went out to the garden. So Jesus asked to be remembered for the sins he'd take away. He told them of God's final plan that he could not stay. Then he prayed to God to guide him to give strength along the way, for he understood the suffering and the price he would have to pay. He asked God if there was any other way to avoid having to die on the cross to save us. Please could do it, but not his will, but his father's will would be done, because he was always obedient to his father. But unfortunately for him and fortunately for us there was no other way he had to save us so then they took him away the leaders and guards were waiting to take him away from town they would nail him to a wooden cross place on his head a thorny crown they had turned the crowd against him said he's not god's son to fear 
And the crowd yelled, crucify him. Jesus did not shed a tear. And then on Good Friday, he had to die for us. The sky turned black and thunder rolled. Jesus said his final words. Please, Father, forgive them. It is finished. Then they heard. Friends sealed him in a cold, dark cave with a big stone door, stone for a door. Not many came to see him, for the crowds, they cared no more. He was dead. A lot of them came just to see him before miracles, because they thought it was cool, right? So. And there. She's going up to the tomb. Though God's plan now seemed complete to the people here on earth, Christ's death had just be the beginning. A new chance for our rebirth. For when Jesus died, he died to save all people, great and small. He took away our sins from us, which was the greatest gift of all. He rose again on Easter Day. The people were amazed, for God's plan now was understood. They gave him love and praise. Jesus is still alive today. He reigns in heaven above. He forgives us and he guides us and fills our hearts with love. So Jesus had to do that for us to save us from our sins. The other thing I want to share with you today is our resurrection eggs. Now we have a set of these at our house. Um, some people make them sometimes. There's lots of things you can do with resurrection eggs. But each egg walks you through the story of what happened to Jesus. Okay. So the first one is our donkey. Because Jesus brought the donkey into Jerusalem. That's egg number one. The second one is three silver coins. So one of Jesus' followers, Judas, betrayed him to the Pharisees. So they paid him actually 30 silver coins to take them to where Jesus would be. So Judas led them to the garden where he knew Jesus was going to be because they were friends. So he knew where Jesus was going to go. Took them to the garden so that they could arrest him and lead him away. Egg number three is the chalice. This is the cup of wine that would have been a representative of what they used for the communion at the Last Supper. So they used the bread and the wine, which became our Holy Communion, Jesus' body and his blood. Next one is the praying hands. This is representative of him praying in the garden, asking God to take the cup away from him so he wouldn't have to die if he didn't have to but his the father's will and not his will was done and so he died for us because he loved us so much and here we have a leather whip they scourged Jesus which means they hit him and it hurt him really bad and it made him bleed And then they took a crown of thorns and they put it on his head. I don't know if you've ever seen a bush with thorns or pricklies or anything like that. They, they prick your finger and make you bleed and they put that on his head. And so that also really hurt him. And then the cross. They put him on the cross to die for us. And he died because he loves us and he wanted to save us so that someday we could be with him in heaven. Next one is a dice. So the Roman soldiers played a game at the foot of the cross with dice. They rolled the dice and they said, whoever got the biggest number got to take home Jesus' clothes. Because when they put him on the cross, they took his clothes off. And they sold them with each other. But there was one piece in particular, a big long tunic. It was what he wrapped around him. It was one piece. So they cast lots for that so that whoever got that, because they didn't want to tear the tunic because it was valuable clothes are really valuable back then you couldn't like just go to the store and get them they had to be handmade and everything so and it says in one of the old testament readings they prophesied that it was going to happen that they would cast lots for his clothes that's one of the many ways that jesus fulfills the prophecies of the old testament this is the spear so after jesus died the 
soldier was were coming around and they were going to break the legs of the men that were still alive but they noticed jesus was dead and to make sure that he was dead they stabbed his side with the spear which he had already died and so he didn't feel anything but blood and water poured out so that also uh was the prophecies they will look on he who they have pierced that was also in the old testament and the blood and water was represent how he's washing away our sins Next one is the cloth. So a man named Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body and he wrapped it in the linen cloth and he put it in a brand new tomb that he had owned. So he put Jesus in the tomb. So and then they put a big stone across the door so that people can get in. And they actually put two soldiers there too. They're worried about Jesus' men coming and saying, oh, he's risen from the dead or whatever. So they put soldiers there to guard the tomb door. But, of course, my last egg is empty. How do you think the last egg is empty? Because the tomb was empty, despite the soldiers and everything else. God sent angels to open up the tomb and let Jesus out. And the soldiers, like, in fear, fell over. They passed out. or They didn't die, but they fell over everywhere. And they were scared to death of the angels. So, needless to say, the angels had no problem getting Jesus out of the tomb. So, all right, I'm going to show a little video of the Holy Week. The first Passover happened when God's people left Egypt long ago. After that, God's people celebrated the Passover every year. One year, Jesus and his closest followers traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. On the way, Jesus said, Go into town and find a young donkey colt. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks where you are taking it, say, The master needs it. When the men got back with the donkey colt, they spread their coats on its back and Jesus climbed on. The donkey started to clippity-clop through the town. People came running. They threw their coats down for the donkey to walk on. They took palm branches and waved them in the air, they shouted. Some of them remembered the scriptures that said, Your king is coming, sitting on a colt of a donkey. That night, it was time for the Passover dinner. Jesus and his closest followers gathered in a big room. Jesus stood up, took off his coat, got some water in a wash bowl, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he started washing his followers' feet. Jesus did this to show his friends they were to serve one another. While Jesus and his closest followers were eating the Passover dinner, Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke the bread apart and said, This bread is my body. Take and eat it to remember me. Next, he took a cup and said, This is my blood. When you drink this, remember me. Jesus knew this would be his last meal with his followers because he was about to be killed. He wanted his friends to always remember him. Okay, so remember this week uh, at your house or whatever, whatever activities you might be doing for Holy Week or whatever, uh, maybe just read through your children's Bible or something like that each day so that you can kind of get in, keep up with the story that's going. Okay, so we're going to close today with prayer and our song like we always do. So dear Jesus, I know that sometimes we do things that are wrong 
I'm very sorry for those who want to change. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to die in our place and for giving us for our sins and making us new and clean and washing away our sins. Please fill me with your love and teach me to love and obey you always. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, we have our song. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye. Happy Easter.